What's interesting, Kieran, from what you're saying is that you see parallels between this conflict here in Israel and uh, border conflicts, you said, in Europe and in different parts of the world. Uh, but you don't draw a parallel between uh, Ireland's experience of British colonialism, which is uh, what's most commonly cited as the re- as the reason for uh, pro-Palestinian sympathies in Ireland. So why, why is it that you don't see that as being applicable uh, in this case? I, I, I see no parallels at all. Um, for one thing, um, Irish nationalism, and even, even the IRA, even though they were, they were not genocidal. I mean, they, were, they never wanted to wipe out the British state. They never wanted to wipe out all Protestants in Northern Ireland. Um, they... And that's just, that, I mean, they're the most extreme version of Irish nationalism. Irish nationalism is actually quite constitutional. And um, it, it it got a state, it settled down trying to make the best of the state. And uh, it didn't, I, I think there were, there were some of the laws were um, maybe unsympathetic towards the Protestant minority, but there were no specifically anti-Protestant laws. There were no laws specifically relegating Protestants to secondary status. I mean, definitely there were, there were laws that um, supported the Catholic position a bit too much, but um, there, there was nothing in comparison to um, the kind of laws, you know, the, the dimmy status laws that we ha- have seen in, um, in, in Islamic countries, um, pre- oppressing Jews and Muslims, yeah, sorry, Jews, Jews and Christians. Um, so I, I don't really see any parallels. Um, I, I, I think that Palestinian nationalism is a quite different, quite different thing. So Kiran, I'm just interested how you went about kind of forming your viewpoints about Israel and becoming informed about this conflict. You, you mentioned that you were over here on a visit in 2019, but uh, how did you sort of get interested in, uh, in, this, uh, in this conflict and get informed about what's happening here? Um, I suppose it goes back to when I was at school. Um, at school, we did a lot about the Holocaust. Um, it was covered a lot in the curriculum. And I was struck by how um, there was nobody to speak for the Jews. They didn't have their own state. There was nobody to sit at international conferences or at the League of Nations to thump tables and say, this, this can't be happening, this is, this is wrong. So they were, they, were literally, they were just left on their own. And... You know, I can I can see parallels today with the unfortunate Kurds or the Rohingya in in Myanmar or even those African ethnic groups in Darfur who are currently being slaughtered by Arab militias and nobody is paying any attention at all. Like you really need every ethnic group really needs to have their own state. Um, and it's also the kind of a recognition thing. If if you have your own state, then suddenly you become a more substantial thing, like you're in the Olympics, you're playing other nations in soccer or basketball or whatever, you're, you're in the Eurovision, you know, you're, if you become a recognisable thing, so people can relate to you. If somebody attacks Switzerland or Sweden or Ireland or, or whatever, people will be able to point to that straight away and say, oh yeah, that's there, you know, they're on the map. Whereas the Kurds aren't on the map. They're just a kind of a blob in southeastern Turkey and northern Syria and northeastern Iraq. People uh, people watching this w- would say, well, the Palestinians also deserve uh, self-determination and to have their own state. What would you, what, 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 what do you think about that? Well, they were offered their own state on numerous occasions. Um, in the late 1940s, they could have had it. Um, there are various occasions, I think in 2000 and 2008. Um, I think, was it Ehud Olmert or Ehud Barak? I think it was Ehud Almert offered them um, pretty much all of the West Bank and even even was offering a little bit extra so that the Palestinian negotiators could go back and say, we've got the equivalent area of the West Bank. And I mean, in fairness, they do have, you know, small, but they do have the Gaza Strip already. And what are they doing with it? They're just using it to attack Israel. Hamas, Hamas is not interested in the well-being of the Gazan people. Hamas is only interested in destroying Israel. So they, they, I would argue that they already have a portion of a state and they're not making much of it. They're not, they're not, they're, they're, okay, I don't, the ordinary Gazans don't really have much choice in terms of who's ruling them, but their leaders are not interested in 
the betterment of the Gazan people. It's, it's, it's on a stage that's for the improvement of, of, of the lives of Gazan. Gaza is a state that's being used as a weapon against Israel and only, only for that.